Wow, the hysteria related to Donald Trump is off the charts, and I think it exposes the raw politics behind it. Um, I have a couple of points I'd like to make. The only president who I am aware of who actually assassinated American citizens was President Obama. So perhaps the ranking member should revisit her history books. I have an article I'm here from major, the ACLU stating the ACLU and CCR have filed a lawsuit challenging the government's targeted killing of three U.S. citizens in drone strikes far from any con armed conflict zone. In Alaki versus Panetta, the group charges that the U.S. government's killings of U.S. citizens in Yemen last year violated the Constitution's fundamental guarantee against the deprivation of life without due process of law. The killings under Obama were part of a broader program of targeted killing by the United States outside of the context of armed conflict and based on vague legal standards, a closed executive process and evidence never presented to the courts. And as for kids in cages, again, that was President Obama. Several former Obama administration officials took to social media and news outlets last month to explain a gallery of years old photos that showed immigrant children sleeping in shoddy conditions at a government run holding facility in Arizona. The images which the Associated Press first published in 2014 during the Obama administration resurfaced recently for reasons that remain unclear and quickly prompted viral outrage on Twitter. One particularly disturbing image showed two children sleeping on mattresses on the floor inside what appeared to be a cage. A number of prominent liberals and even a former Obama administration official shared the photos, mistakenly believing that they depicted the Trump administration's treatment of immigrant children who were forcibly separated from their parents. John Favreau, who worked as a speechwriter for former President Barack Obama, tweeted, this is happening right now, and the only debate that matters is how we force our government to get these kids back to their families as fast as humanly possible. Favreau said he later deleted the tweet after social media users pointed out that the photos were taken during the Obama administration. So, I think it's important to correct the record as to actually who assassinated American citizens being President Obama and it being President Obama who kept kids in cages. Now, as this committee uncovers uh, more and more censorship activities by the federal government, one thing we are wrestling with is accountability for these bad actors violating the First Amendment. They are already not elected by the citizens, so don't have to answer to the electorate. And certain accountability statutes, such as 42 USC section 1983, only apply to state employees, which is why Mr. Bishop and I have introduced the Censorship Accountability Act to actually hold federal employees personally liable for violating the First Amendment of American citizens. But even in those circumstances when, where one can go to courts for relief, that requires a great deal of time and resources to, provide, to prove liability, harm, and then obtain relief. Uh, it is apparent from the ongoing Missouri versus Biden case that all of these bad actors, it makes it difficult to eventually hold them accountable. Ms. Richardson, I highlight these things to show that accountability can be hard to achieve for injured Americans. Do you think this could be further exacerbated if certain activities that facilitate censorship are increasingly done by AI systems rather than government employees? I do. I think that what these tools open the potential for is broader censorship and done without having to have an individual employee sitting there doing it. They're able to flag posts um, at, a, at a larger scale. So I do think the fact that the NSF is funding them is concerning. Well, in the upscaling of AI technology can provide censorship operations, and the scope of it is absolutely astonishing. 
For example, in its pitch to the NSF, Meaden stated, stated that it was using AI to monitor 750,000 blogs and media articles daily, as well as to mine data from the major social media platforms. That just gives you an idea of the absolute scope of what AI could do for violating people's First Amendment rights. In your testimony, Ms. Richardson, you outlined in great detail the number of grants, the large sums, and the various number of partners that the federal do dollars are going to to censor American citizens in violation of the First Amendment. What can the proliferation of this type of technology do to the censorship industrial complex, which has already been uncovered, if it is not properly overseen for beneficial development? Well, I think what we've seen through, as you just brought up, the Missouri v. Biden case and Twitter files and many other aspects is this increasing involvement of the federal government with private parties in order to censor speech. And this is just another example of that, the federal government funding universities, funding companies to develop these tools that allow censorship at a broader scale. Thank you, and I yield back. Tell the lady yields back. Uh